welcome to this course on stochastic modeling in this lecture we will look at markov decision process markov decision process more often called as mdp finds a wide variety of applications in solving engineering problems it is basically an optimization technique so mdp provides a mathematical framework for not only modeling a system but also the cases wherein there is a decision process making process that is involved and the process of making decisions affects the way the system evolves so partially this is a case where the system is a random but an external entity can affect the way the system can probabilistically evolve by making decisions so because in engineering uh, situations there is always a case where an entity more often a human being can take some decisions and act upon it and the system is not fully under the control of the person because of the external environment which uh, affects the performance or the evolution of the system so that brings in the random component but however the way the system will behave is also dependent upon the action being taken by the uh, entity or the person some of the applications of the markov decision process include uh designing when to replace or inspect components or machines in an industry the decision can be made based on the age or certain conditions for example if you inspect a component there is a probability that the component may be found to be faulty in which case you may take some uh um um reactive measure as to replace it or repair it and so on and there is a probability that it may be found to be working properly so this is how the machine will uh, behave component will behave but again the time at which you inspect or the interval between two inspections will also affect the probability of the component being found to be a defective if you if you inspect it very quickly very often then it is unlikely that its uh, state might change but if you put the component to use for very long time and then make an inspection it is very likely that it might uh, might fail okay so the action that you take is to decide uh, when to inspect so obviously you will be trying to do an inspection which will optimize certain uh, criteria there is maybe a cost involved in inspecting the machine inspection cost and there may be also be a cost involved in the component being non working okay so very repeated inspection will increase the inspection cost if you inspect very rarely then the downtime of the machine that is uh, which goes uninspected that is the machine or the component may be may not be working and the time it takes from the time the machine becomes down till it gets inspected and replaced might be more on the average and that is going to add some cost so optimum interval time interval between two inspections is important again you cannot fix that interval also as the age increases you may have to increase the frequency of inspection and so on immediately after a replacement the time interval can be increased and so on so hope that gives you an idea that you have to take some action and that is going to affect the stochastic behavior of the system then how much to produce a commodity based on the demand okay so uh, the amount of uh, 
produce is important because if if you increase the produced and if it gets unsold you have some loss on the other hand if you uh, conservatively produce less amount of a quantity but there is a demand and if you are not able to uh, meet the demand then there is an loss of profit that you get because you have lost the opportunity of uh, selling items similarly self driving cars also uh, can be posed as an mdp problem because the machine which is supposed to do the self driving uh, a driven obviously is going to take an action and it is going to interact with the external environment and uh, the car can be said to be in a different states okay uh, and as the you uh, take some actions the state of the car may may be changing very safe to less safer and so on then obviously in financial sectors also you can uh, look at problems which can be modeled using mdp how much and when to purchase stocks can also be modeled as mdp okay we will get into the formalism of the markov decision process let us have a discrete time stochastic process which has got finite um uh, which is uh, uh, looked upon or observed at finite time steps and it is given by xn n equal to 1 2 3 so the time steps at which you observe the uh, process 1 2 3 are discrete in nature and therefore it is a discrete time stochastic process and x1 x2 x3 are all random variables so you have a finite uh, collection of random variables which are indexed by the quantity 1 2 3 so it is a discrete time discrete state stochastic process let's further assume that xn is a discrete time markov chain in that case we know how the evolution of the dtmc has to be it is given by the familiar equation of the dtmc that is the probability that x n plus 1 equal to small x n plus 1 the random variable at capital x at the time n plus 1 time step n plus 1 taking the value small x n plus 1 given x n x n minus 1 x n minus 2 x minus minus 3 and so on will only depend upon the latest time step which is x n which is written like this one so we have the state which evolves as per the dtmc and we know that the initial probability measure of occupying different states along with the one step transition probability given by the transition probability matrix will fully describe the uh, dtmc because all multi step transition probabilities can be obtained through the tpm future state occupancies can also be found out using that and so on now states are linked with an external process and this process can perform an action we will call this action as a small a then there is an action space which tells the set of all possible actions that can be taken so what we are telling is in every state we are supposed to take an action the action performed uh, depends on the state at the particular state we do an action we decide and take an action there are only finite number of actions that are allowed and we put all these actions together and form the action space we will denote it using a capital letter a so a given action small a is an element of the action space capital a now this action is going to affect the way the system evolves 
That is, we in a case of DTMC, the one step transition from the state, let us say I to J, depend upon the present state I and the state to which you are looking for the transition J. So PIJs are fixed for every a given pair of state I and J. But in the case of MDP, PIJs are a function of action. Different actions will affect the PIJs differently. So we have one value of PIG for every action A in capital A. So we now use this factor and then write probability of x n plus 1 equal to j given x n equal to i and a n equal to small a n as p i j of u. Here what we mean by a n is the action that is taken in the nth step. That random variable because you can take any given action in the state n. Suppose you take the action small a n, then uh, uh, small a n, then which we will call it as a. That depends upon p i j of a. Okay, so this a is what goes here. So further, let us assume that it is a time homogeneous process, in the sense that p i j does not depend upon the time at which the state is present or the action being taken and PIJs of A's are all the same for all time. It doesn't change with the time. That is of course an assumption which is uh, otherwise it will be more complex to model. So the transition from I to J happens depending upon the current state. I as well as the action A. So in a MDP, given the state I alone, you cannot tell the transition probability to the next state J. We should also know what action is being taken in that uh, state. So the sequence of actions performed, they will form a random variable. We will denote it as capital A1, A2, A3 and so on. Well, we we can only tell that this is also a discrete time, uh, discrete state stochastic process, but these are all being taken by the uh, uh, external entity or the human being. But there is no uh, structure like a Markovian assumption being there. The way you take action is up to you. You can fix it or you can change it or you can do a, a take actions in a randomly. So we, we will not be able to tell about this one. And let the realization of these actions be denoted by the corresponding small case letters, small a1, a2 and so on. Uh, in as we mentioned in the case of a normal DTMC, the transition PAJs are purely dependent upon I and J, whereas in the case of MDP, PJ, PAJs are a function of action A. So for a given, for every given action, there is a TPM um, or the tr transition probability matrix associated with it. So you have a set of TPMs, one per action. So the TPM itself is a function of uh, uh, the action. Of course it may be a function of time but if you have assumed that it is a time homogeneous, time will not play a role. Let's look at some examples. Let us consider that we have uh, three urns each having some balls which are either blue or red or yellow co colored balls. The mix is not known. What we have to do is we have to randomly choose a urn and then pick a ball. We inspect the ball and we can replace it back in the urn. We can even complicate the process that the trial that every time we choose a ball, we inspect the ball. If it is red in color, you place it back. If it is blue in color, you uh, place it in the uh, 
uh, earn to the right side. If it is yellow, you place it in the left side or in any complicated manner also. Obviously, the, uh, the probability of drawing a ball okay, is going to change with the urn being chosen. And the uh, what ball is drawn will also uh, change, uh, ch uh, decide okay, the future probabilities and so on. So here the action is the choice of the uh, urn that you make uh, to decide to pick the ball from. Next let us assume a, uh, a more interesting problem from uh, sales. That is you are a marketing manager and you have to, uh, you are, um, uh, have to have a control over the sales of a product. And you model that the sales of the pro product which is being looked upon every month, month by month what is the total sales of a product. You model it to be in three possible states. The sales may be good or it may be a medium sales or it may be a poor sales. So roughly that way you categorize the sales. And then we call it as the, the condition of the sales. As good, medium or poor. So as a marketing manager you are supposed to take an action. Obviously you are supposed to take an action which will improve the sales condition. That is, you will try to go more towards the good state as compared to a poor state. But more than that, sales, you are interested in increasing what is called as the profit, overall profit or net profit and so on. Okay. So it might be that profit as we will see later is the uh, product of the number of units that you sell as well as the profit per unit and so on. So that is the one which you want to eventually improve upon. Suppose you have a product that costs C dollars, then your action that you may think of is to give a discount of let us say 10% on the product and this is the action that you do and then look upon the sales, observe the sales at the end of the month. So this is one possible action. This action would decide the sales. It will decide how the uh, condition with the ball. That is if you are in a poor state, if you give a discount, there is a probability that you will go to the medium state. There is a probability you will go to the good state or a probability that you will remain in the poor state. So the action is going to decide the transition probabilities. Similarly, from medium also you can give a discount and the probability of going to three different states from the medium states, those transition properties will also be affected by the action. You can think of other actions also. The action might be to give a discount, that is one action we saw, or it can be to spend on advertisement, which is supposed to boost the sale. But I suppose it is going to cost you something which will possibly reduce the overall profit because you have to reduce the, from the net profit you have to subtract the cost of advertisement. Or it can be to change the price of the commodity. That C, which is the cost of the unit, can be changed. If you reduce it, that is what we call as discount, you can keep it same or you can even increase it. Why do you want to increase? Because suppose you go to the good state, sales, if you increase the, you, you know that you are in a, rather of course you are in a good position. So this is the time you want to make money and therefore you increase the cost of the product, you will increase the net profit. But what can happen is if you increase the cost, the cost sensitive customers will go away from this brand and therefore you may go switch from good state to medium or poor state with a higher probability. So your action is going to affect the probability of transitions. 
or you can take an action as to increase or decrease the inventory uh, forecasting the sales. Okay, so the, suppose there is a trend that uh, the um, sales is picking up, you can change the inventory that you maintain. That may also affect, for example, if you, there is a cost involved in keeping the inventory, storage cost, transportation cost, and so on. And if the sales do not uh, meet the amount of inventory that you have, then there is a cost involved. If, the, if it is a perishable item, then you lose money. Or it may be an item with uh, some shelf life, okay, uh, expiry date, in which case as the time progresses, it will not immediately perish, but you are more closing towards the expiry date. That is also not good. If you reduce the inventory, and if there is good sales, but if you are not able to, if you have run out of your product, then also you lose the profit. So there are many actions that you can think of, and each action is going to affect the state to which you switch over, and so on. And there is also what is called as the reward, which is the amount of the profit that you are going to get. So your eventual aim is to increase the reward. We will come to the reward a little uh, sooner. So now we will introduce what is called as a, uh, we'll formalize the action that is being taken. So we saw that in every state you can take an action. That action has to come from the action space. Okay. Now you have to decide upon action. And that is what we call as the policy. Policy is a way of deciding what action has to be taken in a given state. And perceivably, that is something to be done to meet certain goals. That is increasing reward and so on. We will denote the action by the letter beta. And your, that policy has to tell in a given state, I, what is the action that you have to take? That we will denote it as beta i of a. So that is the, um, that tells, the policy is basically nothing but telling you what action has to be taken in a given state. And it has to tell for all states. The first policy that you can think of is a deterministic policy, which is also a static one which is a state independent. That is what you do is, in all states, whenever the state is visited, the same action is being taken. That is, here, there is also another action that you can do, that is no change. That is, you don't give a discount, you don't change the sales price, don't change the inventory, nothing. Don't advertise, uh, it's a uh, status quo action. That may also be sometime good. So your action can be to always uh, the same action being taken for all states all the time. And that is not going to be a very interesting one because first, if that is the way these Markov decision process works, then it is trivially a DTMC because the same action, the value of Pij of A which is the transition from state I to state J based on the action because A is fixed. You are basically fixing the transition probability matrix corresponding to that particular A. Out of all possible TPMs, one for each A, you are deserve fixing on one TPM. So it is basically a, a DTMC. Only thing is the action is fixed. The next thing you can think of is also sort of a deterministic policy wherein the action to be taken depends upon the state, okay? That is, from one state to another state, the action being taken or recommended can change. But for a given state, the action to be taken is fixed whenever the state is visited. That is, the action is 
tied to the state, but it doesn't change with time. So also it is not that the number of actions are equal to the number of states for every state you have, there is a one to one mapping with the actions. There can be 10 different states, four actions. In three different states, a given action is being taken in some other two states, another action and so on. So only thing is for every state, you specify an action to be taken whenever the state is visited. But from one state to another state, the action can be different. So that is another way in which you can think of. But again, if you look at it, the transition probability matrix of this MDP again can be easily arrived at. That is, for a given state, the action is fixed. And therefore, if you want to construct the uh, transition probabilities, you have to go to that particular TPM corresponding to that action and take the ith row. If you are talking about the state number i, uh, the ith row of the TPM corresponding to the action being taken in the state i, will be the transition probabilities to different states from i because that is the action you are going to take. So you collect different rows from different TPMs corresponding to the actions being taken. That is for the ith row you look at the action that is being recommended, go to the TPM corresponding to that action, take the ith row and put it in the matrix and do it for each possible state you will get a new TPM, which is a mixture of rows from different TPMs. And that is going to be your TPM for this MDP. Again, once you know the TPM, you can solve how the MDP is going to behave. You can do it. Again, this kind of deterministic uh, policy is also something you can uh, analyze. And it is very similar to the DTMC. Next thing is that it is not necessary that for every given state the action to be taken has to be fixed. You can specify it probabilistically in the sense that you can tell that in a given state I will take this action with this probability, another action with some other probability and so on. Okay, So that is also something that is possible. So here what we do is, we call this as a random policy in which different actions are possible in a given state and the probability of choosing that action in that state is being specified. But obviously you have to take one action or other in every state and therefore those probabilities should add up to one. That is probability that in the nth time action an is a given that xn equal to i is specified for the policy beta as beta i of a. Okay, So this is beta i of a is the probability that action a will be taken when you are in state i. So for a given state i, beta i a is specified for every action in the action space. Therefore beta i of a is probabilities basically and therefore it has to obey the following properties. One, beta i of a has to be greater than or equal to zero because they are probabilities. And further, sigma i, sigma a element of action space, beta i of a has to be one because in a given state i, you have to take one action or other from the action space and the probability of taking that action, if it is beta i of a, if you add up all those things, it has to be equal to 1. And this has to be true for every state i. Okay, So this is what we do. So now p i j of a is the probability that you go from state i to state j when an action a is being taken. Now let us uh, look at this example and then check what we mean by the uh, probabilistically taking an action. Suppose what you do is, suppose you are in a poor state, sales condition, obviously you will 
look for actions wherein we will improve the sales and some profit you will probably take an action of giving the discount or spending on the advertisement you may unlikely to increase the cost or increase the inventory okay so if you for example so what you may do is you may tell that uh, with probability uh, point 0.4 i will give a discount point 0.3 i will give uh, um, spend on the advertisement and of course you may also tell with the point 0.1 i will increase the price or point 0.1 i will decrease the inventory or something like that so there are four possible action that you may do in the four state and for every action there is a probability that you will remain in that state or switch to another state medium or good similarly in medium state also all four possible actions are allowed with the different probabilities and so on now these two conditions are little obvious because beta i of a's are probabilities then suppose we assume that the dtmc underlying the mdp is a periodic and irreducible and because of that it is ergodic in the sense that uh there is a limiting and stationary probability distribution that exists but now it is not just a dtmc which is allowed to evolve on its own we also take some actions now and then in every state we further assume that there is a policy beta and based on that policy beta you take actions that is the prescription beta i of a is given for all a's for all i's and with this action being taken then also the mdp is ergodic and therefore a limiting stationary probability exists then what is the probability that you will go from a state i to state j in that stationary condition that can be figured out suppose you are in state i and probability of going to state j is that in state i you can take an action a with a probability beta i of a if you take action a the probability of switching from i to j is p i j of a so if if you do summation a beta i of a p i j of a is the probability that you will go from i to j in one step now we will introduce another quantity which is more important than just the steady state probabilities which are probability of the uh, dtmc underlying dtmc of the mdp remaining in state i uh, uh the, those probabilities alone because actions are also important let us define a probability pi i a it is the probability in a long run the system to be found to be in state i and taking an action a that is if you the system is on an arbitrary time stay you inspect the system and the probability that you will find the system to be in the state n and a being the action that is being taken based on a given policy that is the probability pi ia then pi ia is asked to obey the following um, uh, properties number 1 pi ia is are to be greater than or equal to 0 this is the probability of uh, being in the state i and performing an action a this probability has to be greater than or equal to 0 and it should be normalized that is sigma over i sigma over a pi a a should be equal to 1 because you have to find it in one state and taking one particular probability if you add all possible states and all possible actions in all possible states that should add up to 
so it is more like a matrix then so if we have a set of pijs which obey this condition will it form a valid probability distribution that is you have a c let us say there are n states and there are m actions so there are n m possible uh, state action products or cases that are there you can arbitrarily fix some values um, fractions they all add up to one among distributed among these nm this one do they form a valid uh, density fun mass function is a question for it to be a valid pmf you would also look for some other uh, condition to be satisfied number 1 although you can fix distribute the uh, total value of 1 divided into a lot of fractions and then distributed among pi a is okay for it to be a, a meaningful or a valid p a probability mass function what i would expect is this one condition let's look at this one sigma over i sigma over a pi a, a means that it is in the state so it has to add up to one consider the probability of the system to be found in the state j that we will denote it as pi j that is what it means is probability that you will find the system to be in the state j at the time n irrespective of what action you take which means that you can get pi j by summing pi j a over all a that is sigma a pi j a is what you give you pi j and uh, how do we get pi j a okay so again to come to j in the time n you have to occupy one of the state say ai at the time n minus 1 and take a particular action a in that one and if you do so then you will come to j in the next time with a probability pij of a so the only way you can come to the state j in a given state is to take an action in a given state i and then this is given this is fixed pij of a so if you sum it over all possible states in the previous time step and all possible actions that are allowed by the policy this one then this should be equal to this uh, pi j so this condition should also be satisfied then it is a valid uh, limiting distribution so if there is a policy that is being specified and if the mdp is ergodic it will settle down to uh, a case like this one the final uh, steady state distribution of the state and action to be like this one once you know this one you may be able to uh, find out how the machine, the mdp performs and so on now the question is if you find that a policy is being taken you are not told what the policy is but you have told that the steady state distribution of this pi a a's are given will you be able to figure out what the policy that has been adopted yes you will be able to find out that is you are interested in finding beta i of a okay that would have left to a stationary distribution specified by pi a a which is a valid probability mass function so what is beta i of a by definition it is the probability that um um uh, in the state i action a is taken it is the probability that a is the action when you are in the state i so this probability conditional probability can be written using the usual well known theorem this is probability of a given b is probability of a intersection b by b that is equal to probability of an equal to a xn equal to i divided by probability of xn equal to i 
So on the numerator we have got pi i a. On the denominator you have got only pi i like this one. So that can be obtained by summing pi i a's over all possible a's. Sigma a pi i a will give you that. So that would be the uh, policy that you have to adopt. So suppose you know a stationary distribution. The policy that you have to blindly adopt is this one. Pi a a divided by sigma over a uh, pi a a by pi i. That's it. Okay. Um, so if you have the stationary distribution vector like this one, the policy can be decided based on this condition. Now, as we mentioned, we are always interested in doing an optimization. That is what the ultimate goal will be. So let us make it the MDP formulation more interesting towards this end. We tell there is a reward associated with performing a particular action. That is whenever you take an action in a particular state, the system not only switches to a different state based on the action, it also leads to a reward. And we will specify that reward as R i a. R stands for reward. So R is the reward associated with taking an action A in the state I. So in a given uh, time step N, the total reward that is accumulated can be easily found out as sigma I varying from 1 to A R I A. Uh, sorry, this is uh, this i is actually for time step. Okay, it is uh, it's not associated with the state. Okay, uh, the, so that is to be it's the R A is the reward taken in the ith step. Okay, uh, when the action A is taken. The, the uh, that is also one interpretation. Let us st uh, stick to that. I A A R I A is the reward associated with the action uh, A taken in uh, state I. Then this summation is this index has to be over the time step. Sorry, the same I is being used. Then the average reward can be found out R bar. Is what you do is you as uh, sum the reward over the large time steps that are involved divided by the number of steps that will be the average reward that you get. So actually this average reward is what you want to maximize. The policy, there are different policies which may lead to different value of R bar. So obviously it is going to be a function of the policy. We want to maximize this average reward given to us. Because for example, if you increase the cost of, for example, in the previous example, if you increase the cost of the product, the, uh, co the profit per unit uh, item sold increases, but obviously the total number of units sold may decrease and the reward may be the total profit earned in that month may decrease or giving a discount may increase the number of sales, but may or uh, increase or decrease the total profit earned. So this is the quantity that we are interested in, R bar. So R bar can be found out by uh, observing a policy, okay, after reaching stationarity for a long time and then taking the time average of the reward earned per unit time. There is another way of finding R bar from the stationary probability distribution of state and actions. We will call it as the expected reward earned by the policy by adopting the policy beta. We will call it as R beta as the average reward policy beta offers per unit time. Its expectation which we will call it as E of R beta can be found out as sigma i sigma a pi i a R beta i a. That is R beta 
i a is the reward offered by being in state i and taking the action a and you know that pi a is the probability that you will be in state i and taking an action a at an arbitrary time and you sum over all possible states and action you will get r beta so the basic problem is an optimization problem which can be stated as follows maximize this quantity expectation of r beta which is sigma i sigma a pi i a of r beta of i a okay well we will just look at just one more example to motivate how the reward uh, is critically dependent upon the action being taken and the various uh, states that are visited and so on let us consider you have a problem of maintenance of a machine and uh, uh, it can be modeled to be a dtmc so the machine can be in the following state uh, state 0 indicate the machine is in a good state one indicates the machine is has a slight problem two indicate the machine has got some serious problem but it can still work and three means it cannot work and therefore it has to be replaced every time you can take an action that is do nothing that is you continue to use it even no even if it has slight problem or severe problem and so on or you can performing an overhauling which is supposed to uh, improve the state of the machine okay if you do an overhauling from a, a machine with a serious problem you may go to a machine with a slight problem or with no problem with certain probabilities or may refine in that one okay and then there is maybe a profit associated with usage of the machine so because you will manufacture some goods using the machine and you may sell it there will also be a loss experienced when you incur some expenditure towards overhauling or replacing the machine so when a machine is in a state zero the machine you can probably this may be the action you may do that is do nothing and therefore you there is no loss associated no overhauling no cost of replacement and so on if you now look at only the loss aspect of it in state one the manufacturer can go on but there is a loss of 100 because the minor defect hampers the production in two you may decide to do an overhauling which will have a cost of 4000 uh, in three you can't do any production and therefore there is a loss of 2000 uh, and overhauling cost or replacement okay uh, of uh, 4000 that is this may be together may be viewed as the cost of replacement so this is the last part and the gain is that in states 1 2 3 you may continue to manufacture but it uh, produces items with different capacities which leads to different profit of 3000 2000 1000 and so on so this is a complicated way in which the rewards can be associated with the actions that you take and the state in which the machines is okay well now what we will do is uh, we will uh, uh, finish our discussion on mdp telling that finally we have got arrived at uh, statement that the uh, Markov decision process can be stated to be an optimization problem which comes under what is called as the dynamic programming so what it tells is you have to maximize um, you have to arrive at pi IAs, which is again a function of the policy beta you have to choose a beta that is the policy which will fix pi IAs. But R beta of IAs are all associated with the policies. Okay, the rewards are all given to you. So you have to maximize by changing the choosing the policy beta such that what is to be maximized? Sigma i, sigma a, 
pi a a r beta i a which is e of r b r beta that is what the expected reward earned per unit time but while choosing the policy beta it has to be a valid policy which will lead to uh, the following conditions being met beta i of a that is probability that action a is chosen in the state i this probability that will be greater than or equal to 0 sigma a beta i of a should be equal to 1 because we have to take one action or another in every state and then this is important for it to be a uh, valid stochastic process that is pi j is equal to sigma over all a pi j m ok um, so this mtp th which means that maximize this subjected to certain constraints this is obviously a dynamic programming problem and it can be solved using this we will not get into how we will do, do this dynamic programming because it is basically an, a totally a different uh, formalism itself we will stop at this point telling that uh, mdp uh, can be solved post and solved using a dynamic programming as a dynamic programming problem okay thank you we'll stop at this point